So we've run through the applications of what an inverter can do for you and why you need one, not just because your mate next door's got one. However, that usually uh, has some buy-in. So the specifications of our sine wave inverters, well, actually, that's a key thing. I said sine wave inverters because all the EnerDrive range of inverters are pure, true sine wave inverters. Now, what does this mean? Uh, a lot of the older or cheaper inverters on the market will be either modified or square sine wave inverters. What this means is normal AC waveform that you're getting from your house, from the grid, for example, is that nice flowing sine wave. Modified sine wave is all sort of jutted, and then a square sine wave is essentially that, it looks like a square. Why is that important? Um, and again, sensitive equipment like TVs, microwaves, for example, other electronics don't like modified or square sine wave to the stage where they just will not work. So rest assured, all EnerDrive products are pure sine wave inverters, so no issues there. The transfer models as well, whilst we're talking a little bit of tech side there, the transfer model inverters are classified as an RCD protected inverters. There's three different ranges of inverters from a technical standpoint, an isolated, uh, equally potentially bonded inverter, or an RCD protected. So we'll go over that later on, but these are classified as an RCD protected inverter. Now, another one on specification side there, these are classified for indoor use only. We'll touch on that in the installation, but indoor use only are our inverters. So that's that side. The sizing for our transfer inverters, they come in two different sizes, either the 2000 watt or the 2600 watt. Now the 2000 watt is also available in 24 volt DC, so great for the industrial applications, truck applications, or for marine applications as well. So again, 2000 watt is available in 12 or 24 volt DC. The 2600 watt is available in 12 volt DC only. Now those ratings of 2000 watt or 2000 VA, for example, that is its continual rating. These do have a higher output rating, normally around about double that continuous rating, so around about 4000 watt for a very short period of time. Now that just allows large motors, for example, that real quick inrush, that quick peak, to be able to be powered by the inverters. And the EnerDrive ones do have quite a large startup capacity there. But again, the 2000 watt there is its maximum continual output power on that side there. Now, as with most electronic items is the inverters aren't 100% efficient. So easiest way to say that is if you've got a 2000 watt load on this side, it's not actually gonna be drawing a full 2000 watt here. Certain inefficiencies in the way of converting that DC power to AC power are losses. And some of those losses actually do transfer into heat. So roughly about 90% efficient, the inverters are. What does that mean as well? Is it means that it's really ideal that if you can run a DC piece of equipment, let's say a fridge for example, run a dedicated DC fridge. Don't run a low power draw. So again, don't worry about running even just little things like a USB charger plugged into an AC outlet to charge your phone. Just have a dedicated DC USB charger. Reason for that is they do also draw power at low current. So this can be a good few amps um, when the actual unit is turned on and only supplying a low amount of AC output. So best, if you can, to run DC equipment. However, again, these are the great ones there when you want to run those AC appliances, the creature comforts that you've got at your house that aren't available in DC side there as well. So that pretty much covers the specification side of the technical side. Now let's take a look at the actual physical side of the inverter. So first off here, um, we've got the unit itself. What else comes in the box? The cable kit, which we'll show a little bit later on, is an optional accessory. However, what else comes in the box is a remote cable extension, and that is a great feature of our transfer model inverters that we can see here we do have the display panel. We'll talk about this later on, but that display panel can be mounted either completely in a separate location, or it can actually even be spun that if you've got the inverter orientated this way in your installation. So that's what comes in the box, as well as an IEC cable here. Now, it looks a little bit odd. It's just an extension lead with IEC ends on it. It is for the mains power in and also your hard sort of wired connection on the output side there. Now the key thing with an inverter is you are playing with AC electricity here, so follow your guidelines in your local state or territory. 
here in Queensland, obviously all AC wiring must be done by a licensed qualified electrician. So best not go cutting this. Again, engage your AC electrician for that. So some other functionalities here. We just touched on the fact that we've got the AC input there, the AC output there for the transfer model here. On the front, we've got the RCD breaker, which is a circuit breaker, as well as your RCD, your safety switch there. So you've got the test button on the front. That one there is rated at 16 amps, as the bypass is rated at 16 amps. We then have our AC outlet on the front here. Good again, that just gives you an extra place you can plug into, a bit of fault finding as well, compared to normally this is where your hardwired would be. We've got the circuit breaker on the front here. That is a 10 amp circuit breaker just to protect this outlet. Again, the RCD one here protects this as well as the output there. This one here is just for that outlet. The other circuit breaker you've got is this one here on the side. That is actually protecting what's coming in from here. So if you do overload your input, normally your RCD safety switch on your input off your caravan, four wheel drive, boat for example, would trip. However, if that fails to trip, this 16 amp one here on the side will also trip to prevent any overloads. Now, some other features here, down this end here, we have our positive and negative connections. We have our grounding lug here, as well as ventilation, which we'll talk about in the installation side. So that's the unit there, four nice big solid mounting points there that can be either screwed or bolted firmly. And the last thing in the uh, box is also the most important, the manual. So take a good read of that before you do the installation and also keep it on file as well because it does discuss about your error codes and your settings in there as well. So keep a hold of the manual there as well. So that covers the specifications of the inverter and next we'll go on to the installation side.